Hello and welcome to all of you. Glad you could join us for this edition of Tech 24. In this week's show, we'll tell you how archaeologists are putting down the shovel and turning to tech to uncover the secrets of the past. Plus, in Test 24, we'll try Samsung's Flip, a digital chart display that will help you share your opinions and ideas during business meetings. But first, Egyptian scientists unearth a new artifact from ancient Egypt on average once a week. Key to the success of modern-day digs, the new technologies that allow archaeologists to effectively see through walls to the relics of the past. Haxi Myers-Belkin has this report. In the shadows of the ancient pyramids of Giza, archaeologists continue to unearth the pharaonic secrets of 2,500 years ago. This is the final resting place of a priestess named Etbet. It's the latest tomb in this region to bring Egyptologists flocking. Almost two millennia after the death of the last pharaoh, the Egyptian authorities announce more or less weekly a new discovery. This vast statue of Ramesses II was found in a residential area last year, and some experts are convinced it's just the start. Every king had to build here, make statues, temples, obelisks, everything. Crucial to this latest phase of discovery is archaeologists' decision to embrace technology. At the Cheops Pyramid last autumn, researchers armed with powerful scanners discovered a hidden cavity large enough to fit a plane. The plan now is to drill a three-centimeter hole through the wall and send in a robot to find out what's inside. And it's not just the pyramids benefiting from the latest scanning innovations. Tanis in the Nile Delta is home to an entire city, buried just meters under the sand. This is the location of one of the largest neighborhoods of the ancient city of Tanis. There are millions of these fragments here because the site's enormous. It's more than 200 hectares. For years, the prospect of mapping the area was unthinkable. But now this machine, a magnetometer, allows archaeologists to effectively see what's under the earth. No digging required. We can see the plan uh, of the houses which are here, the remains of settlement. The data collected is analyzed by a computer, eventually providing an accurate map of a buried world. At present, Tanis attracts only 1,000 tourists each year. Egyptian authorities are hoping that, as this latest technology bears ever more fruit, that number will grow. And speaking of unveiling the secrets of the past, for centuries, cryptographers have been trying to decipher the so-called Voynich Manuscript. Dubbed the world's most mysterious book, this 600-year-old manual is full of illustration of exotic plants, stars, and human figures. And to date, no one was able to understand its content. But recently, a professor from the University of Alberta used artificial intelligence to decipher the text by running an algorithm he says is 97.1% accurate. In this case, the code involves shuffling the order of letters in each word and dropping the vowels. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Greg Kondrag, the computer scientist who came up with these statistical algorithms. Thank you so much for joining us here on Tech24. First, tell us more about the Voynich manuscript and why you decided to concentrate on this ancient text in particular. Yes, the, the Voynich manuscript is a fascinating document. Uh, it uh, was written in the 15th century. Uh, it's a manuscript written in a unique script and uh, in a known language, so we don't know what language it represents, and we don't know the alphabet that it uses. This manuscript is the most uh, important unciphered medieval manuscript in the world. And now, how does it work exactly? How did you come up with the right algorithm? Yes, so the first question that has to be answered before anybody can attempt a, a decipherment is, to determine what kind of language the language uh, the manuscript represents. Is it Latin, is it Italian, or is it another language? So we wrote uh, a program, we developed an algorithm that can actually uh, discover or guess the language of the script based on the comparison of the patterns 
in the words of the manuscript to samples from other languages. And in particular, we had samples from about 400 languages. According to the results of this algorithm, the, the language that is the closest to the language of the manuscript is Hebrew. And what else did you find out about the Voynich manuscript? And are there perhaps other ancient texts you would like to try to decipher with AI? Yes, uh, we are very interested in uh, ancient scripts uh, that has not been discovered yet. For example, Linear A or Indus script. These uh, are uh, scripts that are not ciphers; they are just alphabets that have that were used by people in the past and were forgotten. And at this point, we are not able to decipher them, and they may contain very interesting information about our history. Professor Greg Kondrag, thank you for speaking to us. You're welcome. No pun intended, but let's try to dig a little bit further with our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. A team from Northwestern University has uh, used two different types of imaging techniques to find texts that were hidden within the book bindings of ancient manuscripts. Tell us more about this incredible story. That's right. Researchers from the Northwestern University were trying to find the hidden text in the parchment of a 16th century book. Now, they used two imaging techniques. The first one was the visible hyperspectral imaging technique, and second was the X-ray fluorescence technique. Now, they, they used them separately, but it didn't yield uh, good results. But using an algorithm, they discovered that if uh, the results of these two techniques were fused, then they could get better results, and that's what exactly happened. So they got the images of this hidden text that could rival the images uh, produced by or revealed by a synchrotron. Now, this is an important breakthrough because it shows that uh, uh, the scanning of uh, old books or paintings can be done in laboratories instead of taking this precious material to a synchrotron facility. And now in the east of France, scientists have also used uh, an imaging technique, this time to look at the different layers within a painting. Absolutely. A team of French, Italian, and American scientists uh, have refined an imaging technique based on terahertz radiation uh, that revealed the hidden layers of uh, the 17th century oil painting called Madonna in Perigria, which is conserved in a museum in Metz. Now, terahertz radiation corresponds to those electromagnetic waves whose wavelength is between 0.1 and 1 millimeter. Now, what they did was that using a terahertz scanner, they bombarded this uh, painting with the electromagnetic waves. And in response, these um, unseen layers, they reflected these terahertz pulses with different intensity and time reception. Uh, they were, of course, uh, collected uh, in a detector. And again, using uh, uh, an algorithm which was developed by the team, uh, they were able to, or rather this algorithm was able to provide uh, fine-tuned uh, recording or fine-tuned reading of these results. And ultimately, all this data was then sent to a computer model uh, through which 3D mapping of these uh, layers uh, was uh, produced, and they and these layers were uh, shown in great detail. Dan and Jay Cattlecar there, thank you. We're going to move on to Test 24. Samson's flip is a peek into the workplace of tomorrow. As the name suggests, this huge digital chart flips, allowing easy sharing, annotation, movement, and searching, as well as the ability for multiple users to create content at once, Dan. That's right. This device has all the functionalities that you need for presentations, for meetings, and for brainstorming sessions. So let's start with, uh, let's first flip it. As you can see here, there's a blank screen, and uh, Samsung has provided a stylus, but you can write it with your pen with or a pencil. Any, pen. any point that is under two millimeters can be used as a writing object, so I can do it with the stylus, or I can do it with a normal pencil. There are options of changing colors, as you can see here. And the other end of the stylus or the pencil becomes a shader, so anything that is still 4 mm can be used for shading, as you can see here. Right, erasing. And Above four millimeters, it can be used as an eraser, so I can erase it with my hand. Oh, wow. So that's pretty impressive, right? It is. Uh, at any given point of time, there are 20 such pages. So f uh, up to four people can uh, create content on these uh, pages. Uh, there are other functionalities, like you can mirror your devices. Here I have mirrored uh, the screen of a phone. Right. So you can mirror phone, or you can mirror your computer or a tablet. 
Uh, there are sharing functions as well. So if you want, if I want to share this screen, I can save it. Once I've saved it, I can export it. I can send it through email. I can print it or just put it on a USB. And the interesting part is on top of the screen, I can add content. So I can, if I want to, I don't know, add some notes. And save it. Yeah. Right. Then I save it with this. Now this is a whiteboard. There are other options as well. So I can turn it into a into a blackboard. blackboard. So if you prefer a blackboard, so this is one option that you can uh, also use. Then, uh, of course, you can open all the files you have saved before. So you can also import images. So here's what I did earlier with an image. And you can see, um, if I want to flip it, I can just turn it around. And I can, again, make notes. It does bring more flexibility, definitely. So this is all done because of, there are two sensors, two important sensors. One is the proximity sensor, and other is the NFC sensor. The NFC sensor allows you to mirror the screen, and proximity sensor basically detects if anyone is approaching the board. Thank you, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. But do stay with us here on France 24.